Yeah, so the main questions to ask when you're signing a contract with any builder is, is this really a fixed price? And is there everything that's listed in this price specific to my site? A lot of times, like I said, it, it'll be they pick up that standard plan, they stick it on your block, they give you a price, and then you pay your deposit, and then they'll do your, your formal design ready for council, and they'll say, oh, we have to do half a metre cut and fill here, so that's going to be an extra 20 grand. Didn't you know that? Oh, well, no, because you hadn't had your survey done yet and we hadn't done the, the proper design, so we have to add that as a variation. So you've got to find another $20,000 for really something that might cost you 3000 and hard to prove that something's not there or was there or, or something when you go in the ground. So we have clients or, or people come to us and say, I've got a problem with my builder. He called me up out of the blue. They were doing the piers. He said they had to go another half a metre deeper on all the piers. He didn't tell me why. He just said the engineer said we had to. He wanted me to come out and sign the variation on the spot. And they kind of push you in the corner. So if you don't, don't come and sign it now, we have to send everybody home. It's going to cost you more. We have to charge you for the, for the delay. So they're asking you, who has no engineering or building experience, to come out on site in a hurry, sign a variation which you have no idea what you're signing or why you're signing it, and then they'll tell you what it costs after. So they're not even telling you what that ad addition is going to be. So this particular lady then said to me, we've got the variation for $8,500. And I said, okay, so well, did the engineer give you an engineer's report or certificate to state that she said, no, they won't give it to me. I said, okay, well, I quickly sat down and worked it out with her. Making a 30% margin, the, the, a reasonable rate would have been $2,500. And that's where the builder's still making 30%. But they've charged her $8,500. They're not giving her an engineer's report, not giving her anything specific as to why. So by telling her to ask the right questions, they kind of buckled a bit and they knocked it down to, to 6000 which wasn't a big reduction, but it's a little bit more. Things happen on site and we've got to accept that but there's got to be a reason behind it. So the example I gave about the extra depth of the piers, there was no structural reason why that should have happened. The engineer didn't even give him a report to say that he authorised it or that it should happen. The only time it should happen in the ground is if you're drilling and you hit a rock that you didn't know was there. That's different. Or the example that we had where we hit a water table when we were drilling our piers. We hit something physically that was there and we could show the client that the holes were filling up with water. And we had to change the method of construction because we had no choice. But there was a valid reason behind it. To, to put pressure on your clients to come out to sign a variation on the spot, to go deeper in piers but not give them a reason why you had to go deeper in piers and not tell them what it's going to cost before they've signed and approved it, that's where the problem is. Sometimes you find that. But it's a matter of how you handle it and how you deal with it. There's got to be a reason for it. You've got to be able to justify that, that reason. And I tell people they can't charge you if you don't go out there and sign over a variation without the right information. That's just a threat or a pressure to put on you to get you out there in a hurry. But legally, they can't say, oh, you made a stop because we had to go deeper. We're going to charge you more. Well, no. You've got to tell me why. And then you've got to justify why I need to pay more. Not, I'm just going to pay more.